Time for another MLS club, DC United from, well, Washington, DC. Another one of the original 10 MLS clubs founded in 1984, started playing in the first season in 1996. DC United are one of MLS's most successful clubs in the late 90s, is about as dominant as a club has ever been, with DC United winning a majority of their titles during that era. They've won the MLS Cup and the Supporters' Shield four times each, tacking on three U.S. Open Cups, a Champions League, and are the only U.S. club to ever win the Copa Interamericana. Being the team from the nation's capital, they take on a lot of their iconography from the United States as well as from the district itself. Through multiple iterations of their badge, you can see they've had the bald eagle and it's faced left and right at times. Beyond that, you have three stars that represent the jurisdictions around the area that they represent, that being the District of Columbia, as well as Virginia and Maryland around it. Finally, they take their colors as well as a couple items from the flag of Washington, D.C., with those three stars being a part of it, above those two red bands, and the color white as an element around the badge. They have three rivals, with the two smaller ones being the older Charleston Battery of South Carolina and Philadelphia Union, a younger rivalry built out of just vicinity. But their most important one is with New York Red Bulls, and this is a pretty long-term rivalry, and it frequently pops up in the MLS playoffs as well as in the Open Cup, and it is one that is called the Atlantic Cup which brings us to our MLS-specific topic for this time. In the United States and Canada, to an extent, many derbies and rivalry matches will actually win you silverware as well. That's a pretty uncommon thing in the rest of the world. So while this rivalry is called the Atlantic Cup in the same way that you might have El Clasico between Barcelona and Real Madrid, it also is the name of the physical trophy that you win each season. There are many of these different rivalry matches throughout the league, and they generally all work under the same idea that... Throughout the matches that you play during the regular season, the team that takes the most points from just those two matches wins the piece of silverware. If there are tiebreakers that don't elicit a title winner, the team that already had the trophy generally keeps the trophy from the previous season. So it really is a point of prestige between the two clubs in a rivalry match, with DC United as well as New York Red Bulls really taking this seriously as another piece of silverware each season. Most of the rivalries themselves, such as the Cascadia Cup, which is actually between three clubs, the Sounders, the Timbers, and the Whitecaps, or the Trillium Cup, or the California Classico, or the Rocky Mountain Cup, have a physical trophy. But not the rivalry between FC Dallas and Houston Dynamo, which is hilarious to me because they fight it out for a friggin' cannon. That matchup is called El Capitan, and the team that wins each season gets an actual working cannon, like a physical howitzer from the Civil War. Leave the Texans to come up with something that fantastic. I, I really love that one. So, back to DC United, and I want to talk about former players, and we're going to start with just the 90s, because that dominant era that they started the first two seasons of MLS with two championships is a really key one for former players. The focal point of that area was a trident of attacking talent. The first would be Jaime Moreno, one of the most successful players in the club's history, and as a striker, he's also their leading all-time appearances holder. He, with his compatriot, Marco Echeverri, formed an incredible goal-scoring duo. And the final prong in that attacking trident would have to be Raul Diaz Arce, the Salvadoran, who is also their all-time leading goal scorer for the national team. In their current squad, the first name out of the blocks has to be Bill Hamid, their goalkeeper, who in 2009 broke into the squad from their academy, and he's kind of emblematic of that period being a transition from clubs starting with the draft or into an academy as the place that they drew new talent into their squad. Just this last season, they drew in a big name with Christian Benteke coming over from the Premier League, and it's going to be interesting to see what he can do as a goal-scoring threat that they really need in this coming full season next year. And the young name to watch for DC fans, as well as for U.S. men's national team fans, is Donovan Pines, who as a center back really needs to be a key name in the next generation of U.S. talent coming to bear. My final thought on DC United is it's been a bitter decade for them. They haven't won a title since 2013, and they finished last in the league this last year. So it's really going to come down to what their new manager and former player Wayne Rooney can do in a first full season as their coach. 